Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. In today's video we are going to talk about some of best practices when using DSO-138 oscilloscope. Some of the points may be applicable, not only to DSO-138 oscilloscope, but they are sound and good practices when dealing with any sort of measuring instruments or electronic devices. So, let's begin. If you have already seen some of the previous videos, you are already familiar with concept of acrylic protective case and its importance. Throughout this video, we will revisit this concept a couple more times, and point out some of the pitfalls you can easily avoid, by implementing this kind of protection for your device. Now let's see some real-life scenarios where things might go wrong. Regardless if you have purchased DSO-138 oscilloscope as a kit, or as assembled device, at first glance you might have noticed that all electronic components are exposed. All resistors, capacitors, soldered points, connectors, and other electronic parts are unprotected and easily accessible. In one hand, this represents no hassle approach to certain features and functionalities of the oscilloscope, for example, an easy access to built-in square signal generator port, or an easy access to UART connector for firmware upgrade. On the other hand, this is a source of potential failure that could easily lead to bricking your device. For example, you can easily drop a screwdriver, or tweezers, and accidentally short out two or more soldered points on the board. Also, an accidental drop of heavier object, can easily damage or shatter LCD display, thus rendering device useless. One of the biggest design flaws, in our opinion, is the LCD display. The display itself, on left side, is very loosely connected to the board, via thin ribbon cable, and on right side is glued to the board. In time, due to heat, this glue gives up, and leaves display to flap around the board, at any movement. Inevitably, this leads to ribbon cable breaking, or breaking one or more contact. As a result, we have a functioning device, with faulty display. This renders our device useless. All of these potential points of failure can be easily mitigated by implementing protection, in form of acrylic case. Next on our list of possible points of failure is bottom of the board. As you can see, the bottom of the oscilloscope's board contains soldered points and jumpers for access to certain features. From our firmware upgrade video, you are familiar with jumpers JP1 and JP2, that are used to put oscilloscope into firmware upgrade mode. Beside this, the rest of the board is just one big cry for short circuit to happen, at the earliest possible inconvenience. To mitigate this point of possible failure, the designers and manufacturers of the device, did provide us with plastic spacers. So, first good practice in this scenario is to install provided plastic spacers, or colloquially, oscilloscope's legs. It should go without saying, but we are going to say it anyway, whenever you are using any sort of measuring device, or in our case, an oscilloscope, it is always prudent to do so on non-conductive surface. Whether or not, you have installed plastic spacers, putting oscilloscope on metallic or conductive surface is just plain wrong, and even more so, dangerous. This leads us to next point of failure, and that is static electricity discharge. Every one of us, at some point in time, suffered an unpleasant shock, when touching another person, or any metallic object. We say we were shocked by static electricity discharge. Although unpleasant, usually, this does not cause any harm to us, or to the other person. But with electrical devices, story somewhat changes. The static electricity discharge can cause serious damage to electronic devices, and sometimes render them inoperative for good. This is caused by overvoltage, and short burst of high current, running through device, or its component. This problem is even more present at winter times, when we often wear wool, or synthetic material clothing, 
and the air is dry due to increased heating. Simply, by walking, or moving our hands, we can electrify ourselves with enough static electricity, to cause discharge, when touching someone else, or metallic object, or surface. This problem can be mitigated by wearing anti-static wristband, or bracelet. Also, a cheaper, but more painful solution, is grounding yourself prior to touching device, by touching any grounded metallic object around you. Beware, that by just touching any metallic object, that is not earth grounded, does nothing for static electric discharge from your body. Now, let's build ourselves a simple circuit, using 555 integrated circuit, breadboard, some resistors, capacitors, and DuPont wires. The design and function of the circuit is immaterial, we just want to demonstrate a couple of good practices in this scenario. First thing, assemble your circuit without active power source. Whether you are using battery, AC-DC adapter, or some other power source, you connect the power source at the end of your assembly. Now, if you are familiar with 555 IC, you know that pin 3 is out connector. This is where we are going to connect our oscilloscope, to get a visual representation of 555 IC output. But is this wise thing to do? A brief detour is in order, to get ourselves familiar with 555 IC output. Depending on manufacturer, or said more plainly, depending if you have an original 555 IC, or cheap knockoff, the output pin 3, can source or sync, between 100 and 200 milliamperes of current. Again, said plainly, if we are connecting our oscilloscope probes directly to output pin of 555 IC timer, we are sourcing around 100 to 200 milliamperes of direct current, right into our oscilloscope. By any measure, this is not small amount of current. Unfortunately, the DSO-138 manual does not provide any info on input characteristics of the device. There is no direct info on overvoltage protection, maximum allowed current, and etc. So, it is up to us, to use our best judgment and good practices, not to burn out our device. We can mitigate this problem, by introducing a resistor in serial connection with our probe. In layman terms, we will put a resistor between our probe and output from 555 IC. But how big a resistor? In this case, we have to decide and determine how much input current we want to allow into our oscilloscope. Is 10 mA safe enough? In these, and similar cases, it is always prudent to be on safer side and limit the risks as much as possible. Let's go with 1 mA. Now, let's see how we will determine, how big a resistor do we need. First thing that we need to take into consideration is output voltage from our 555 IC. This depends on power source. Generally, the 555 IC outputs the signal that has almost equal output point-to-point -point voltage as supplied power source. There is some voltage drop, but we will assume ideal scenario. So, in our case, we have supplied our 555 IC timer with 5 volt power source, and assuming ideal scenario, our output signal has 5 volt point-to-point -point value. Now, our desired current is 1 mA. So, let's plug these numbers into our equation for calculating resistance of resistor, when voltage and current are known variables. This gives us result of 5 kilo ohms. We do not have 5 kilo ohms resistor at hand, so we will go with next higher value, and that is 5.1 kilo ohms resistor. Now we can alter our circuit, and place resistor between 555 IC output and our probe. Now, we can safely power our circuit, and our oscilloscope, and observe signal that 555 IC outputs. At this point you can ask, how did we decide on 1 mA current as safe? There are several factors that play role into making this decision. First, don't be wasteful. This life rule applies more so in electronics, than it does in real life. One of the hallmarks of good design in electric circuits, is to achieve maximum output with minimum input. 
This translates like this, if the design of your circuit, for the problem you are trying to solve, asks for 5 volts, don't use 12 volts power source. The 7 volts difference between provided power source and circuit design will go to waste in form of unnecessary heat generation and heat dissipation. Secondly, unnecessary high current throughout the circuit generates more heat. More heat asks for some method of passive or active cooling. This increases complexity and costs of the design. It also asks for more expensive components that can withstand higher current and heat dissipation. In addition to this, more heat in the circuit shortens the lifetime of components. In our case, power that is generated in the resistor, that needs to be dissipated as a heat in surrounding space, is just 0.005 watts or 5 milliwatts. This is almost negligible, and our resistor will not heat up or have a problem to dissipate heat generated by current flowing through it. Now, for the end, some points of good maintenance would include keeping your work surface and oscilloscope clean and free of dust. Use lint-free cloth to clean the display, and small brush to remove dust from the board. Do this, while the device is powered down, and power source disconnected from the device. If you are planning not to use oscilloscope for long period of time, it is best to detach probes from device, and place the oscilloscope in anti-static bag, and place it in cardboard box. This will prevent dust from falling onto device, and shield the device from direct sunlight. In line with current fad, for our next video, we will talk about sustainability in circular economy, and all this in connection with our beloved DSO-138 oscilloscope, so stay tuned. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.